Coming up, we're talking about Disney Kingdom's Enchanted Tiki Room issue two. Does it hold up to the first issue? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? All that in this episode of Diz Pop. Diz Pop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and I am here to talk about, like I said, the Marvel Disney Kingdom's Enchanted Tiki Room Issue 2, which I hold in my hand. Ba-ba-ba. Big deal. Excuse my eyes. Uh, there's a the monitor for the cameras over here, and I'm just trying to make sure we're not going in and out of focus, you know, class up the joint just a little bit. But if you're listening, you don't care at all. So that's rude. Um, just kidding. But I hope everybody's doing really well. Um, if you're watching, you can see I've started to put up some Christmas decorations. I'm trying to channel my inner Joyce from Stranger Things. It's, uh, it's getting a little cry. But let's just dive right into the comic issue here, issue two. I'm just going to go over the plot and give you my thoughts and feelings on it. Should be a pretty straightforward, pretty short uh, little interaction we have with each other today. So let's just go in. First of all, I really love the cover that I received. I know there was a couple variant covers, but I love the one with um, Alfred, uh, the dog on the cover. <laughs> He's just miserable. Poor little puppy. Uh, anyway, so uh, you open it up the first page, um, which really cool is they do have a summary. They kind of catch you up. Um, and then it's got little circles um, with each character and who they are. So you can kind of know which one's uh, Jose, Michael, Fritz, Pierre, um, and then the families that are staying there, the Randy family, um, and then the uh, Wally and Chip and Agnes and Alfred. So I'm just going to read you the uh, the catch up here really quick. Um, and this is how it starts. Let's catch you up, shall we? The Enchanted Tiki Room is a magical place of wonder on a secluded island in the South Pacific. People come from all over the world to experience the magic of the Tiki Room, and currently we're hosting Agnes, a former Hollywood star, and her dog Alfred, who through the power of the Tiki Room has just gained the ability to speak. Wally has just broken up with his girlfriend, but in his short time here has already gotten a new perspective on his life. The Randy family, wealthy beyond measure, is finding it hard to enjoy the trip without constantly buying material objects. Chip, the island's new volunteer, is similarly, similarly, I can speak, similarly trying to find his niche and his break that'll catapult him to stardom. As the visitors are settling in, some of the uh, natives are feeling decidedly unsettled. The macaws, Jose, Michael, Fritz, and Pierre, uh, recently just had a big disagreement on the future direction of their band, and with the singing stars on the outs the future of the enchanted teak room looks bleak so that's that was the uh, that was first issue and that catches us up and so the issue kind of opens right there um and obviously uh tangaroa the tree who narrated the first issue is narrating this issue as well and i have to say that i think that's my favorite character um that and obviously the dog the talking puppy um so uh, I just want to point out, um, I mean, the art, the art in this, again, is 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 excellent. Um, I thought the second issue was actually really good. Um, I'll get to my general thoughts, I guess, in a second. There was some jokes I just wanted to point out, or um, jokes and kind of like insider little Easter eggs or stuff like that. But um, it starts in the first page because he, um, I'm going to read you the just a little bit of it because I thought this was really, really funny. Um, so it says, Lately, Michael has been visiting me at night. He'll come to rest high atop my branches and divulge his innermost thoughts. I listen silently. I don't really need to listen. I do it to be polite. I already know everything he has to tell me. You see, I am an observer. Not the kind that watches you through your window at night. If you see that kind, you should really notify the authorities. I'm more of the omniscient type. I see and know all, like the Watcher. Do you know that guy from the Marvel comics? Disproportionately large head, seems pretty lonely. I'm like the tree version of him. I thought that was pretty cute. I like that they kind of reference Marvel Comics and another character um, in similarity. Um, so obviously, um, Michael is still upset. He he feels um, uh, he feels artistically unfulfilled, as we learned in the last episode. And he just kind of he's questioning himself. How did he end up here? Uh, it was um, and you know, and he's in a singing bird band. You know, the boy band. It's funny. Uh, and then he... 
he just talks about how he's bickering. He can, he's complaining about the pressure and saying that he originally wanted to be a cobbler or a game show host. A cobbler is such a uh, weird thing to choose. But um, uh, so, and then we see a little glimpse here of the person that was showing up at the end of the last issue. We know nothing about them. And this is the only time you're going to see them in the comic book, but they're trying to swipe at Michael unbeknownst to him. And he flies off before it happens. So she's lurking. Um, there's also a nice little tribute um, in here uh, to uh, Steve Dillon, who uh, worked for Marvel and recently passed away. They did a nice little uh, uh, drawing here for him. I thought it was very touching. Anyway, so uh, we cut back into the other stories of the island, and we start with Agnes, who is trying to dance and sing and teach um, Alfred how to do stuff. And Alfred pretty much hates Agnes. Um, he thinks that she is self-centered and never thinks about what he wants. Um, he just wants her to leave him alone, and she's just like, um, she's got big dreams, high hopes for him. She wants to get him a gig at the Tiki Room for starts, and then launch his career, and then she has some fantasies about basically riding his coattails, where she's the center of attention the entire time, and he is not. Alfred starts to get upset because Agnes says... Uh, he's upset because she basically says she owns him and he he's he's upset because he's like is that is that how you think of me as just something you own so he th he's upset that she thinks of him like an object and she says well that's how it is and you'd be lost without me and he says um he gets upset because she's watching him all the time and he has no privacy whatsoever um and so she's like fine if you want to go go and he runs out the door it was really funny. Um, so the next storyline it cuts into is the birds, the macaws, again. And they're um, they're they're freaking out a little bit because they think they're going to have to cancel one of the shows. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they're they like, what do we do? We need someone to sub in for him. And as they're saying this, guess who walks by the door outside? The orange bird. And it was really cute. And um, there's even a thing where they're like, is the orange bird a boy or a girl? And I'm like, that's none of your business. Um, but he comes in and they're like, can he even sing? And there's this really cute moment where he gets up to do his audition and the musical note falls out of his speech bubble, uh, which I thought was really funny. But I'm really glad that they brought the orange bird into it. I really like the orange bird. Uh, and so then there's another voice in the room that says, I could do it. And they're upset and whatever. And um, it's Chip. He wants to sing Jose's part. Um, you know, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Was it Jose that stormed off in the last issue? And I think Michael's just, un is emotionally unfulfilled. Regardless, it's not relevant really yet to this issue, but I'll have to go back and look at that. But they're talking about trying to do a hologram, uh, situation. Um, uh, I forget. Uh, there was like a, there was a joke in there about, um, people, does anyone know how to make hol holograms? Uh, lots of musicians have had successful post-humus careers. Posthumous. Posthumous. It's not post-humus. <laughs> um, anyway, so then Chip's like, well, I'm a Juilliard graduate, and I know all the parts inside and out. If you've had me, I, um, if you'd have me, I could stand in for Jose. And so they're like, whatever, the kid will do it for free. And so then it cuts to like the inside of the uh, the showroom and like pretty much everything is on fire and destroyed and whatever. And it's basically um, the birds are freaking out and it's, it, you know, Chip kind of stole the show, but not in the good way. And he is, as we know from the last uh, um, issue, he's kind of like full of himself up in here. So, um, so they kick him out. Um, and they're like, we're done. So he's sad and left in the in the tiki room. And then we uh, we cut back in, and uh, Jose comes back. He says, you know what? I'm gonna, I'll work with you guys. Don't don't worry. I'll work with you guys if you meet my conditions. And they're like, fine, whatever. We're tired of it. And then they had made the hologram, but it is hideously, uh, it, it it does not look pretty come together. It's actually a really funny little panel in here. A nice little joke. Um, so uh, they move on. Agnes is having a nightmare about a plant come to life that, um, you know, and she's so she's worried about Alfred. So she takes off to go look for him. Then we finally cut back into the Randy family. And of course, they're walking on the this is another one of my my favorite jokes here. Um, so it's, you know, in the little square box, the Tangaroa is saying, oh, hey, it's the Randy family, the kind of family that wears sneakers to the beach. And I, <laughs> It's just so funny. Um, 
but they're they're walking on the beach they're basically like upset because there's not enough stuff to buy here they want to they'll even settle for an outlet mall they're clearly people that would thrive in orlando florida um so there's this like so the dad picks up this thing um this ancient artifact i literally just found in the ground it probably belongs in a museum and they kind of toss it aside and that comes back again later but i still don't know what that artifact is so we have to watch out for that in later issues um so uh, the kid's upset because he's like, well, it's free. Why would I want something that's free? I, I want to pay for it. Um, and then so they try and buy. I have to look and see which one he is again. Michael. Um, so they try and buy Michael, who's like, uh, I'm not for sale. I, I'm not. I, you don't see a price tag on me or anything like that. Um, and uh, let me see here. Not everything has a price, um, is what he says. So it's interesting. I think there's kind of a running theme here. So it seems like their story is starting to collide with Agnes's a little bit because they both have this idea that they need to own things. So I think there's a, an ownership story that's going to interweave. So I really like that aspect of this story, that it feels like stories are starting to come together. Um, so the the parents are clearly terrible parents, too, because they only want to love the kids if they fit in and everything. Um so they have some exchanges. Uh, there's a really funny and really random uh, cut in here with uh, Pierre. And so it cuts back in there. And they're, so Tangaro is like, oh, and here's a flock of blue footed boobies um, flying past the island. That one in the middle laid eggs in my branches once. Um, and so there's one that spots Pierre. She's got the love heart eyes. She wants Pierre's business so she follows him into the tiki room she goes to squawk like a bird and instead as it comes out high she's panicked and then pierre has to explain that the magic of the tiki room is what gives her the power of speech and pierre's kind of like i don't want to settle down i'm not really interested in a relationship awkward um so you know he doesn't want to deal with these uh these roadie people um so she's like get over yourself uh and then that's where wally is and he's like women huh and uh, Pierre says, I guess, so I've never actually been in on a date because I'm scared of emotional intimacy. So that may be a plot later. And then they cut to the window, and it's the bird watching from the window with hearts around her. It's really funny. Um, so we move over to Chip, who is just PO'd about um, uh, the whole experience um, with the birds. So he is going to leave the island. He hates the island. Everything's stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. So he trips over the artifact. He picks it up. And he's he's pff, dumb artifact, dumb garbage. So he tosses that aside, gets in his boat. He takes off on the boat and starts um, starts leaving out into the water. And here's where it gets interesting. We're gonna have to watch for Chip later because it says, "I never should have saved this island from the volcano. They don't deser deserve a hero like me. But if they don't need me as a hero, maybe they'll like me better as a villain." Bum bum bum. And then this really funny part by Tango Row I'm going to read here. They say the eyes are the window to the soul. When I looked into Chip's eyes that night, I saw nothing. That's because I was holding my binoculars backwards. It was my first time using binoculars. When I finally got the binoculars figured out, Chip was almost gone, drifting off into the darkness. Whatever brightness and innocence had been inside of him at birth was now gone and replaced by something else. Something hollow and desperate. To be continued. Bum, bum, bum. So now we've got Chip who's leaving. And it kind of looks like the girl. So I'm wondering if he's related to that girl that we don't know anything about yet who's there. But he's leaving, so he's going to come back. Um, I thought this was a an interesting issue. I feel like it's definitely like trying to lay some more of the... Like, like I said, it's starting to feel like some of the stories are intersecting more, which I'm sure is what we're getting to. This one was definitely a little more filler um, and humorous. And um, I enjoyed the pacing of this one. A lot more than I did, for example, like with the Haunted Mansion. That one felt like speedy, slow, and then everything jammed in, you know. And um, this one feels like it's still going, and it's kind of like taking a joke and enjoying it and taking its time. So I really recommend it. If you haven't gotten it yet, definitely check it out. I think you can still get two issues because when I went to go pick up my issue, they had the first issue as a recommended thing in my box at the store, and I was like, I already subscribed to this, but thank you guys. But I love that, that the comic store put a suggested comic in my box that was really nice um 
So I am curious, are you guys reading this? Have you read any of the other um, Marvel Kingdoms? Uh, let's get a little bit of a dialogue going. Tweet at me at Dizpop Show or uh, comments in the in the video on YouTube is always nice as well. I do respond to those pretty uh, pretty regularly. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm enjoying it. I like the art. I like the humor. I like the story. I think I'm going to enjoy where it goes. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think issue three is coming out not too long from now because I think I was a little behind with issue two, but enjoying it very much. Um, also my Diz Pop shirt. Check this out. I just got this shirt. Sorry, as I caress myself. Um, I'll put a link in the um, in the description, too, of the YouTube channel if you guys want to get a shirt. These actually are really nice. I saw these on listeners and viewers before I got one, um, you know, because I'm classy like that. But uh, it's a nice shirt. Um, I'm a fan. What else? I feel like I was going to tell you guys something else, but um, I'll leave it at that. I'm going to do another one of these comic overviews. I'm thinking about doing uh, Marvel's uh, event series, The Civil War II, because there's some good stuff in there, and it's just about finished, or the last issue might have just come out. I thought there were eight, but it says seven on my on my book. Um, I'll have to double check that. Uh, I'd like to do that one. That one will be spoiler heavy, though, because there are some major events that go on in that that are impacting the Marvel Universe. Uh, so I'd be curious to see if the Marvel Kingdom series ends up doing a shared universe in the similar way that um, Marvel does that in general. And maybe they're setting up for that a little bit. Uh, I mean, we already talked about that when I was talking about Haunted Mansion. It seemed like they were kind of layering over Pirates of the Caribbean a little bit. But only time will tell. I'd be really interested in that. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to call it there. I'm enjoying this. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, and, uh, let me know if you want to see some other stuff. We've got two more episodes left for the year. I might squeeze in an extra one. We're going to have a must see holiday viewing, uh, episode like I did for the Halloween season. And there is going to be a review of Star Wars Rogue One. And I am super excited for that. Uh, so that'll do it for me now. I hope everybody had a good holiday weekend. Uh, I will see you next time on the next episode of Diz Pop.